welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. This is episode eight, and we will be addressing the question of what is it that you truly want this year? I'm recording this just a few days before the beginning of the new year, and and just a couple days after Christmas. And as I was sitting down and pondering of what it is that I was that I felt like I was meant to tell you today. It was asking the question of what do you truly want in the year 2021? I don't know about you guys, but I am starting 2021 in the exact same place that I started 2020 at my sister's house in Kansas City. Now, I haven't been here the entire year, but I have been here off and on for about six months. And it has flown by. I mean, what a, what a strange year this has been. And I'm sure there's many of us out there that really did not accomplish what we wanted to in the year. But that doesn't matter because there's nothing you can do about that. There's, I mean, other than these last, you know, four or five days, depending on when you listen to this, uh, till New Year's, there's nothing you can do about 2020. It's over. It's gone. I'm sitting here laughing because my, my saying for 2020 was the greatest adventure ever. Oh, my goodness. Well, that came true. <laughs> and, maybe, and maybe it came true for you as well. Like 2020 was one of the greatest adventures I've ever been on. But it wasn't one that I loved. It wasn't one that I thoroughly enjoyed. It just was. It was just an adventure. Maybe I should have been a lot more specific. Do you know what I really meant? I meant 2020. That 2020 was going to be the funnest, most amazing, awesome year that I'd ever had. (laughs) Maybe I should have wrote that down instead of you know, some really quick catchphrase. And as I look back on my 2020, there were, there were some really cool things that I did that I'm super pleased with. I learned 12 songs on the guitar like I wanted to, some of which I published on Facebook and Instagram. I, I read 40 plus secular books and I read 12 plus spiritual and religious books. On top of that, I started a program called Choose to Stay, which is a suicide prevention program that basically helps people understand that everybody has suicidal thoughts. And if we don't give them, if we don't really make them that big a deal, they're not. So I accomplished four out of five of my goals. And the last one was to create my first online program. And I guess if we're really stretching it, because I had no intention of creating this podcast when 2020 started. I mean, I guess it's an online program. It's a podcast, but I guess it's an online program. So I don't know. Maybe I did. And maybe we're too hard on ourselves sometimes about our goal. It's like, oh my goodness, I didn't get it exactly perfectly right. I got like 99.9999999999% done. Where it doesn't fit the exact definition. We get that way sometimes. So yes, it's important to understand what you truly want. But if you get like super, super close to that, or even closer than you were before, that's pretty awesome. And if you feel bad about not achieving your goals... I have had the goal of learning 12 songs on the guitar now for more years than I can almost remember. And this is the time that I finally did it. And I feel so blessed and so grateful to have achieved that goal. But there's still plenty of goals that I didn't hit. I set a fairly high financial goal for the year that I didn't hit. I wanted to finish and publish the book that I'm writing that I didn't, I at least haven't hit to this point. And I'd I'd still love to finish the first draft by the end of the year. But 
And when the third one was to get like 10 million followers on Instagram at first, it was so it was something crazy. And it's interesting as I look back on some of those things because a lot of them just didn't matter. And, and more importantly than they didn't matter, I didn't make them matter. There were other things that were more important to me because that's what I spent my time doing. If I say writing a book is important to me and I find myself watching more sporting events and sitcoms and reruns and movies than I am about writing my book, then at least it's not as important to me as I think it is. And I do, I think that certain things kind of outgrow us, kind of like habits. I've, I've not had as much joy doing some of the things that I've done in the past lately. And I think that's okay. I, I think it's totally okay. We spend so much time watching people on television or sports live their dreams. Now, I'm a huge sports fan. But sometimes it comes at the cost of us living our dreams. There's been years that I've watched almost every single Coyotes, Suns, Cardinals, um, you name it. Like, I've watched it. But there's been plenty of other things that I haven't done. And it's funny because we tell little kids... For example, that, hey, you've got to get all this stuff done before you do anything. And then we go in the other room and watch whatever we want when our quote-unquote stuff isn't done. Which comes back to that question, what do you truly want in 2021? Did you ever have a time that you felt like the world was your oyster? Forgive that expression, but... But honestly, like, did you ever have a time that you felt like you owned the world? That you were just on top of everything? For me, it was when I was 21. I just returned from a mission in Brazil that I loved. And I was ready to take on the world. Well, I thought I was ready to take on the world. The world kind of punched me in the face quite a few different times. And I mean, I guess if I'm looking back, I was actually more scared about going into the world back then. But the world's not that scary of a place. It feels scary, but it just is what it is. Anyways, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but... So 21 was like... That, that was the year that I felt just really good. I felt like everything was going to go my way. And I was just, as I was thinking about it the other day, I was like, cool, well, it's 2021. And it's time for a fresh start. Now, you can have a fresh start any single day, any single hour, any single moment, any single second. And when you have a fresh start in life, when you're born, you take your first breath. Sometimes you can have a fresh start just by sitting down and just taking some deep breaths and getting very centered. I can't think of anything that centers me more than just taking a few deep breaths. I'm a big fan of not necessarily everything about mindfulness, but kind of the general practice of being mindful. Because I think being mindful is just being intentional. It's just focusing on what it is that you want and reminding yourself consistently what you want. It's one thing to get all excited and jazzed up on, on, at the beginning of the year to start out a new year. It's a total other thing that I think it's Darren Hardy that says commitment is doing what you said you were going to do long after the feeling is left. We get so hyped up. I mean, in sports, people get themselves psyched up. 
I used to do that at the gym. I used to totally psych myself up and, and just be going crazy over there trying to wake myself up for a workout. Whereas oftentimes the best workouts I have, I just dive in. You waste a lot of energy sometimes psyching yourself up. So I want you to ask yourself, did you accomplish what you wanted to in 2020? And if you didn't, why not? What was more important to you than your goals? I know for many years, for me, it was the actual sincere belief. If I don't have anyone to share an amazing life with, or especially like an amazing financial life with, then what's the point? And as I think about that more, maybe Heavenly Father is testing us to see what we're willing to do in our life when we don't have the ideal life. What are you willing to do when you don't have the wife and kids? What are you willing to do when you feel that I was in church today and this this girl that had just returned from serving a mission for our church shared this really cool thought. This experience that she had had when you know, this whole pandemic hit and she, you know, many missionaries were going home. She said she felt robbed of her mission experience. And she talked about she talked about praying and she talked about having this experience where I can't remember exactly, but what it brought up for me was how oh I think she said this that Heavenly Father told her this was your experience. He he always knew and and, and Heavenly Father knows everything. He knows exactly what you are going through right now. And having been through some really hard things in my own life, I know sometimes it feels really lonely. And I know sometimes it's even hard to just feel like you can get out of bed. Hey, I remember that, that time in my life when I'd broken up with this girl that, I mean, we were kind of sort of dating, but that's a, that's a different story in of itself. And I, could, I didn't feel like I could even get out of bed. I was so heartbroken. I mean, especially when we get our hopes up, when we get excited. It's like, oh, this is the one. Now, everybody's different, but at least me, I, I connect with very, very few people on a romantic level. Now, I know everybody, like I said, everybody's different. Some people search more logistic, logically, and other people, you know, go with their heart. There's not a right or wrong answer. Like, it's whatever is best for you. But I remember those times. And there's a saying that says the worst thing you can ever do is give somebody hope. I don't agree. I think when we're hopeful, when we're excited, we do good. What if you actually believe that you could have a... Well, I want to close one other thought on being robbed. You may feel like you're being robbed of your experience of life, especially right now during this pandemic. But when, when Heavenly Father already knew everything that was going to happen in the first place, this was your experience. And though you didn't plan it, and not necessarily that Heavenly Father planned it for you, but he knew what you were going to go through. So 
So this was your planned experience. Not planned, but this was the experience that was, you were going to have. What if we started just accepting our experiences and making the most out of them? Instead of making up stories about how our life is supposed to be. We, we all had so many stories about 2020. About how it was going to be so awesome and amazing and incredible. And for some people it was. And for other people it wasn't as much. When we don't make up the story and have the thinking going through our head that we're being robbed. We're going to have a much better experience. It's like you have no idea what 2021 is going to bring. None of us do. But you can choose what you want it to bring. You can decide what it is that you want. One thing I'll have my clients do is they'll make a 3, 5, 10 list. Now, what that is, is that's doing the three main goals that you want to focus on that if you accomplish, like you would feel like a million bucks. And, the, and five areas that you want to grow in. So that might be like a talent, a guitar, uh, amount of books you want to read, amount of programs you want to study. And then there's 10 things, just fun things that you love to do. Because as I said before, 2020 passed so quickly. There's a beautiful scripture that I love that says our life passes like it, but as if it were a dream. It does. This year has passed almost like it was a dream. I mean, Christmas came so fast this year, kind of. But what if it was a dream that you got to pick? What if it really, what if your life really was a dream? And if you haven't had that many successful years yet, or what you feel are successful years, don't compare yourself with others, but take these next few days before the first of the year starts and decide what it is that would make this year incredible for you. What it, what it is that would make this year out of this world for you. I believe in all of our given circumstances, all we can control is us. You can't control the world. You can't control anything going on outside of yourself. And you don't need to. It's often our thinking that says, I have to be somewhere else. It keeps keeps us from being where we are. What is it that you truly want in 2021? Because if you don't take time and decide now what you want in 2021, 2022 will already be here. I know that sounds like super futuristic and all that. I want to go back to that thing I said about 21 being like this fresh start. In a lot of cultures, especially in the U.S., there's a lot of things that you can do once you're 21. Now, I don't, I, I, I don't do many of those things, but like there's, there is, there's so many things that you can supposedly do once you turn 21. It's like this fresh start. You can make a lot of your own choices. What if 2021 was your fresh start, regardless of 
how much you've done or haven't done in your life. What if it was your year of possibility? For those of you that follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm known as the It's Possible guy. Because when we begin to see what's possible in our lives, we generally do a lot more. I think of it like like the guitar. The more I play the guitar, the better I get, and the more possibility I see. Whereas before, you're watching my nieces and nephews pick up the guitar, for example. It's hard. It reminds me, oh my goodness, I, I actually remember learning some of my first chords. And it was, it was hard. It was challenging. But when we begin to see that possibility in our life, everything opens up. Now, I, I say here all the time, go live your adventure. A lot of people don't live their adventure because they don't know it's possible. They don't know what's possible in their life, and so they don't do anything different. I know one of the common goals for a lot of people at New Year's is getting into better shape. Now, One of my former clients actually started out at 465 pounds. And we got him all the way down to 300 pounds. And I didn't do anything. We simply talked each week and I shared with him and helped him understand better how we work as human beings. Or better yet, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And being human is part of life. You don't have to control everything. But one thing that I've noticed, at least for myself, I used to tell people, oh, you only have to work out four days a week, weight-wise, if you want to get in excellent shape. But then I realized that if you're doing four basic muscle groups every single week, or four four groups of muscle groups, so basically hitting every part of the body once a week, if you boost that up to six, you get one and a half times the the workouts. That's a lot. I actually started doing that before before I got uh, COVID. And it it helped a lot. I mean, I, I was seeing noticeable results. I'm reminded of a book by Steve Chandler called The Story of You, where he tells an example of a client that she said she couldn't get her business going. And he said, overwhelming, overwhelm your goal, overwhelm what it is that you want. Start putting in the time, make the time, decide what it is that you want. Doesn't matter if you think you can't have it. If you just show up every day, regardless of whether you think you can or not, even if just for 20 minutes, going to the gym or going on a, or going walking or whatever it is, if you keep doing that every day, you will see results. Another way I like to think about what do you want is, what do you desire? What do you desire more than anything in the world? What would make this what would make this such an awesome year for you? Is there a financial goal that you want to hit? Do you want to get out of debt? Do you want to meet the person of your dreams? Do you want to go on some awesome trip? What is it that you want to do? What do you desire? If you're sitting there and saying, Joseph, I don't desire anything. And maybe it's time to start living your life. Even to start doing a few fun things that you love to do. I mentioned how last year I said it's going to be the greatest adventure ever. 
I would have changed that. I would have said it's the funnest year ever. And at least for me, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to make my year this year. There's so many growth projects that I want to accomplish and achieve. Different programs and things that I want to go through. And that I really want to spend my time in. Sometimes we try to force ourselves too hard. We try to force the answers to come instead of just allow them. Can't force the answers. Just have to let things settle. And then we see the answers. And one good thing that really shows that I just remembered as I was starting to think too hard about the next thing I was going to say. If you're feeling joyful and happy, it's a good sign that you're on the right track. And if you're feeling you're overthinking, that just means you're in your head too much. I want you to think really, what if this could be the best year of your life? And, and even heaven forbid if this whole COVID and lockdown and all these things continue for the next year. How could you still make the most of it? How could you still have so much fun? What do you want? Your joy is a compass to your desire. It leads you, it points you in the right direction. Don't overthink, you don't have to. What if you just took a few minutes Five or ten minutes this each day this week and thought about what would make 2021 into the most awesome year you'd ever experienced. There it is. I think I think that might even be my theme. The most awesome year ever. I think that includes fun. I think that includes work projects. I think that includes growth. And who knows, it might even include include an amazing relationship. The most awesome year yet. I love that. When you give space to settle, you allow stuff to come through you. Then if you're sitting there, thinking about this New Year's and not having anybody to be with, not having anybody to kiss at midnight. It's okay. The most attractive thing in the world is purpose. Well, at least for me, it's it's probably playfulness and purpose as well. Like seeing somebody that's just focused and driven And not even driven, but just intentional. Because the only thing you do is make yourself as attractive as possible. And if you're doing awesome things in the year 2021, other people are going to notice. And maybe even the person that you want to notice the most. Go live your adventure. Go live your most awesome adventure ever. It's just being present in every moment. The best that you can and doing what comes up. Because the Heavenly Father or your higher power is going to lead you down the best course for you. And he's going to lead you to what you truly want. There's a scripture that I love, and it says, And I was led by the Spirit 
not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. And I just love that scripture because your higher power, Heavenly Father, will lead you down the best roads. And you won't even understand. You won't even know. I love doing this podcast now. And beforehand, before I started this, I was like, no, 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 no. And now I'm like, I enjoy this. I really do. And it gives me a chance to be taught. But if you allow yourself to be led in 2021, and, and that's where spending that five or ten minutes or however minutes you're willing to spend in the next week about thinking of what you want to accomplish and how to make the 2021 the most awesome year ever, it will come. And a couple of the things, just to give you an idea for me, that have popped up in my head is in 2021 that I want to have a million listens on my podcast. And I want to have a million views of these videos for this Choose to Stay program that I've been working on. I'm not sure of some of the other ones, but just to kind of stir you up a little bit. I'd love to go to Disneyland. I'd love to go to Disney World. I've been to those places since I was like six. I know that sounds crazy. It's interesting as I just said that because how much I love stories. And I'm not like a huge amusement park person as far as like the the thrill rides because I can't do them. But I love going to Disney World and those places. I haven't been to Disney World since I was like 18 years old. And Disneyland, since I, really, I was like seven. It's been so long. And, and it's only like six or seven hours drive for me. Apparently, sitting and watching sporting events and shows and other stuff on TV was more important to me than doing those things. I got back into snowboard six months ago when I went to my friend's wedding. I'd love to do that. I'd love to play more ice hockey and I play quite a bit of basketball, but just think about what's this stirring up for you. What is it that you truly want? What would make 2021 the most awesome year ever? There's a book called The Artist Way that I was recommended by my mentor three years ago that has helped a lot of his clients. And I haven't even, I I tried it a few times, but it's like a 12-week course. And I haven't taken the time. It's just in a book. It's a do-it-yourself study course. And I haven't done it. I haven't put as much effort into, like, I want to put even more effort into becoming a master coach. I mean, I've studied coaching now for 18 years. I want to put more into that so I can help and serve more people. And I also just love it. There's so many things that I want to do this year. One idea I'm toying with is reading 100 books this year. Probably 80 secular books and, and 20 religious slash spiritual books. There is so much for you to do. There is so much in this big world. And sometimes we get so confined to what we can see in front of us. We get so confined to our past and what we haven't done. And we make that story so big and say, well, if I haven't done this up until this time, I can never do it. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody goes at different levels. It's interesting. I've been playing. I've been playing the game of life with my nieces and nephews. They got it for it was one of the many things they got for Christmas. And I've been really enjoying it. But it's really interesting because at the end of the game, you have these action cards that you add up for every action card that you get. You get 100K. 
get $100,000 for every action card that you take. And it's interesting because I actually learned a little strategy. Not that you can control how a spinner lands, but in my head, I'm actually focused on shooting for lower numbers. Because while I'm hitting these lower numbers, I'm landing on far more action spaces, which are all over the board. I mean, every, almost everything is an action space. And if you get more action cards than anyone else, you actually got a better chance at winning. That's life. Start taking the actions that you want to take in your life. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Because it never will be. I love a, something I once heard that says, well, nobody cares about a, a shot from the fairway. But if you had a really nice shot in golf from the rough, people are super impressed. Or from a sand trap. Because it was that much le greater level of difficulty. And difficulty is just, a th is just a thought in our head anyways. Difficulty for some of my nieces and nephews is doing little math problems because they're super young. Don't compare yourself to what somebody else's difficult and challenging is. Focus on you. Focus on where you want to go and go. And start taking the actions that you want to take. Start going on the adventures that you want to go on. I, I shared it before, but one time I just decided that I was going to go to London and I did not have I did not have the money and I just I decided absolutely that I was going to London the within like 30 days. Dead serious. This is this is true. And everything fell into place. I was able to get airline tickets for super cheap from a close friend. I was able to I was able to get a client to agree to a, a lower amount of money because he owed me a ton of money from the past that gave me enough money to go. Like, everything just fell into place so perfectly. And for a while, like, I was. I was taking these probably good, like, 10-day vacations every month. And then that, that cost a lot of money, and it, it eventually that ended up drying up a little bit. but. There was parts of that I really enjoyed. Parts of that I super, super enjoyed. And it really, I connected with people on those trips that I couldn't have connected with otherwise. You know, amazing people, and you know, some of which I actually still talk to in London. Like people I just randomly met, like one dude on, on one of those trains. It happened to be one of the big guys that does a lot of the animation for Disney overseas. And, it, like, I mean, it's just crazy. Some of the people you run into and meet on these vacations. But the time to start living your life is now. Make 2021 the most awesome year ever. But first of all, decide what that is. So take some time over these next few days. To really sit down and think, what is it that you want? What is it that you desire in 2021? I mean, there's so much to do. The world is essentially your oyster. I was watching a movie and just kind of thinking about actors in general. And how, how very good actors will oftentimes learn their part, even sometimes by shadowing somebody that does that actual job, if they have to play a job in the movie. They get to act. They just get to, they get to play around. You get to play around every single day. And the more play that you bring to your life, the more joy that you will experience. Everything can be play. Everything can be enjoyable. I mean, what do we call it at the theater? A play. That's all it is. They're playing on stage. And people are paying them to play on stage. 
when we are at our best, when we are at our, when we are in that center of our joy, we're just playing. When I'm working with a client and life is just feeling awesome, I'm just playing. So that I, I can play there, and then after that, I can play some more, writing my book, and I mean, all we're doing is playing. We're make believing stuff. We're making stuff up that we really want to do. So I want to really invite you to make stuff up this week that you really want to do. And feel free also on my on my Instagram, the it's possible guy. Feel free to write on when, when I've released this. I, I post these episodes on there as well. Feel free to write in the comments. Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm up to. I also run a page on Facebook called the It's Possible Community. Feel free to join us. It's all about making our life more possible and doing what we love. So I think I'm going to wrap up with that. You know, if you're really having a struggle and a hard time thinking of what you want to do, you're thinking too hard. Just let yourself settle. Go do something fun. Take your mind off of it. Like, go do a quick workout. That really helps out. If you're struggling, especially with being inside a lot right now, do a quick workout. Do a few push-ups. Do something. You'll feel a lot better. And if you're and if you want to sit down and chat and kind of explore possibilities about what you want to do, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. We can set up a time to talk. And if this has really benefited you and you really enjoyed it, then please share it with somebody that is feeling that 2021 is going to be kind of bleak again because it's going to be whatever you make it. In 2020, people, there's certain... Companies that made a ton of money. There's certain people that made a ton of money. There's certain people that had an amazing time. And there's certain people that have all kinds of really cool experiences. But if they're feeling bleak, feel free to share it with them. And thank you so much. Happy New Year. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.